There's a reason that six of my last seven videos feature the iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is easily my favorite camera or camera related purchase of 2023, hands down. I think it's the best content creator camera maybe ever made. But DJI is making a case for itself with the new Pocket 3. So I think it's only right we have a little comparison between the two. Resume is a heavyweight, yeah. Put it on my back, give me everything, yeah. I need. Today we're gonna stay away from the specs and just focus on the results of both of these cameras. In my opinion, both of these devices are best served as on the go, keep on you at all times, leave your bigger camera at home, bust it out of your pocket at any given time, content creator slash vlogging camera. So that's how we're gonna test them out today. And we're gonna be shooting an Apple Log the entire time on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and 10-bit D-Log M on the Pocket 3. And if you stick around at some point throughout this video, I'm gonna be giving away yet another free LUT for the new DJI Pocket 3. <sighs> Now one of the first things that I'm curious about is the depth of field difference between the iPhone and the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 has a one inch sensor with an f2.0 aperture and the iPhone has a 1.8 aperture but a much smaller sensor than the Pocket 3 does. <laughs> Every time I finish shooting my clip on the Pocket 3 and then I raise it from about eye level down to here, I forget that it's still tracking me and it's looking up at me like my dog when he's ready for a treat. He's like... Now for vlogging, the wider angle lens on the Osmo Pocket 3 is a little bit more ideal than the 24mm equivalent that you get with your iPhone. Usually with the iPhone, I keep the little Sherpa Freewell Sherpa grip on me that attaches to your phone and then it unfolds and extends out to a selfie stick so I can get a little bit more reach on it. But with the Pocket 3, you don't really need that. It works pretty good just handheld how it is. You do have the ultra wide lens on the iPhone, which I think is great, but I'm kind of over the super ultra wide vlogging situation. I just don't like the way the image looks and I'd rather shoot with something between a 20 and a 24 mil. So both of these devices offer something that the other one doesn't. For the Pocket 3, we have really good subject tracking, which can pretty much eliminate the need for a cameraman if you're a solo shooter. Like right now, just walking around and this thing is tracking me and it's doing a really great job of it. Even if I go all the way back here and I turn my back to the camera, it's still gonna follow me, it's still gonna do a good job. We're a good distance from the camera and it still has me locked on wherever I go, which is really great. This also comes in hand really well when you're trying to track some kind of subject. Maybe it's not a human being. Maybe you have a car that you're trying to get like a cinematic shot walking around. Instead of having to turn your wrist, you just track the car, walk, and the gimbal will do the rest of the work for you. Now, in the case of the iPhone, we have four different cameras on one device, which makes it easier to switch focal lengths on your iPhone than it is on any professional camera in the world. You don't have to take off any lenses, put the lens in your bag, grab a new one, lock it on there, you're good to go. You just tap a little button and it switches lenses for you on the fly while it's recording if you wanted to. So right now we're on the ultra wide lens, but if I wanted to, I can just tap the 1X. Now we're on the 1X camera. I'm a little too close right now, but if I turn the camera around and get behind it, then I could tap into the 2X, which is kind of a crop into the 1X, but still looks pretty good. And then I can go all the way in to 5X, which is 120 mil equivalent. And for the Pocket 3, you're stuck with just that one camera. So can't track on the iPhone unless you use some kind of external device like a DJI or an Insta360 gimbal that has tracking features, but then you're stuck using their stock apps and then you can't use something like Apple ProRes Log. And then on the DJI Pocket 3, you're kind of just stuck with that 120 mil equivalent camera on there. So, you know, 
really up to you what you need more. For me, I personally think that I would utilize the four cameras on the iPhone more than I would the subject tracking on the Pocket 3. But what do you guys think? Which one do you appreciate more? Let me know down below. Also, the Pocket 3 has this really great rotating front-facing screen, which allows you to see yourself when you're filming yourself. Unlike the iPhone, unless you're filming on the front-facing camera, you're kind of shooting in the blind. And I really don't film with the front-facing camera that often. I'd use it, but not that much. Not as much as the main 1X camera on the back. And this screen is really great. It's a good size. You could easily see your shot. You could frame it up perfectly. You could see the grid if you have the grid activated on there. This might be my favorite feature on the Pocket 3, honestly. Now, I think it's pretty clear that both of these devices are really great for content creating. You know something else that's really great for content creating? Today's sponsor, Artless. Artless is the best place for royalty-free music, unlimited sound effects, high-quality stock video clips to help you tell your story, video templates, powerful plugins, along with video and image editing software. They have all the creative tools you need if you choose Artless Max. For music, they have every genre under the sun, which is one of the ways you can search for what you're looking for. You could also search by mood, instrument type, video theme. They've thought of everything to make your search super fast so you could find exactly what you're looking for and get back to your edit as fast as possible guys do me a favor stop going on google and youtube and typing in free royalty free music that people have been using in their videos over and over for the last 17 years go start your free trial at artless right now use the link in the description below and by using that super special link artless is going to add two free months onto your active subscription plus the free trial that's a hell of a deal when it comes to content creating assets nobody does it as good as artless thank you artless for sponsoring today's video all right fast forward to nighttime and it's pitch black out it is it is straight up nighttime and i'm lit here by a little street lamp and on paper the pocket three should do better in a low lit situation like this with that one inch sensor but you guys let me know what you think is the iphone Pretty grainy. I don't know, the iPhone has surprised me before in the past. Now I'm not gonna go close a door in a bedroom and turn all the lights out. To me, that's not low light performance, that's no light performance. Situation like this, pitch black out with just some street lamps. That's a pretty, pretty good low light test there. So what do you guys think? What looks better? Now I just got a chance to take a look at the images coming out of these cameras side by side. And I have to say, even though the Pocket 3 has a bigger one inch sensor, I think the image coming out of the iPhone in Apple Log, properly color graded, looks way better. It looks like a much higher quality image than the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 actually looks more like a high quality smartphone in my opinion. And the iPhone looks more like a professional camera to me besides the whole depth of field thing. In my opinion, that's the only real thing that's separating this phone from a professional mirrorless camera at this point. I think the iPhone held up as far as stabilization goes to the Pocket 3. I think the multiple cameras on the iPhone is a huge advantage over the Pocket 3's one camera. I do like this front facing screen. I think it's fantastic. I, I can see myself clearly even on a bright day it's really great this is a great screen at the end of the day both of these are really great devices and they're both meant to be in your pocket on the go and just be able to bust out at any given time but you also have to think about the iPhone is always gonna be in your pocket. Nobody really goes out of the house without their phone unless they forget it and then they freak the hell out. Whereas the Pocket 3 fits in your pocket perfectly and it's easy to carry around with you, but it's yet another device. I can't tell you how many times I've just busted out my iPhone and just got the shot that I wanted to get, sometimes in the car. Look at these shot of these deer I got on my friend's property when I was leaving the house. I just saw some deer, punched into the 5X camera and then did a slow roll and a slow pan and the shot looks amazing. This iPhone has also become, funny enough, like my C or D camera when I'm out shooting weddings. Sometimes you got limited angles to the couple, especially during a ceremony. So if I find a really good angle, usually I'll just put my camera on a tripod. And lately when I do that, I've been walking around, busting out my iPhone and getting shots of people sitting down and reacting to the wedding and some shots of the couple. I even got some really good low light shots during a pretty low lit wedding reception and they look really good. The Pocket 3 is a cool device and it's really nice to walk around and vlog with, but I think that's about its limits. Vlogging, subject tracking, and this really great front facing screen. 
The iPhone does everything else fantastic. For those of you that aren't new to this channel, you can click off now. There's no reason for you to hear the same old spiel that I've been giving away for the last 10 videos. For everybody that is new here, I'm giving away a free LUT and I've been giving them away for a long time now and it's all in one folder. So all the old LUTs that I gave away in the past, they're all gonna be in this folder that you can pick up right now. And I'm adding a new LUT to that folder, which is a LUT for the DJI Pocket 3 for D-Log M. So if you're interested in picking up that free LUT and all the other free LUTs that I've been giving away, including the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the DJI Act, Action 3, two versions of the iPhone 15 Pro Max camera app, plus one for the Blackmagic camera app, Action 4, now the Pocket 3, and the Google Pixel Pro LUT. All those LUTs are in this one folder. All you gotta do is very simple. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Take a screenshot of you being subscribed to this channel. Head on over to Instagram. Hit me up at Anthony Lapani. Send me a DM. Show me a screenshot of you being subscribed to this channel and say, hey, I'm here for the free LUT. Would you mind sending it over to me? And if you wanna follow me on Instagram for bonus points, I'll allow it. And I say, sure, here you go. Here's a link to the LUT folder. Enjoy. Thank you for the support. On that note, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for sponsoring this video. Thank you BH Photo for sending over the Pocket 3 for me to play with for the next 30 days or so. There'll be a few more videos coming out on that. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah!